this is Jeff Nager with AMD World Championship of Custom Bike Building, and I've got Gareth with me. He's from England, and he brought over a smoking bike. Gareth, um, welcome to Sturgis, South Dakota, and uh, tell us about the inspiration of this bike. Um, well, it's basically, I acquired the frame from uh, Murray Customs, and um, after contemplating modifying it a while, uh, for, for quite some time, uh, I decided to just try and keep the bike against the grain and um, coincide it with the style of the frame. Well, it is a bike against the grain. Um, it's got a very interesting looking, old school kind of flavor to it um, and kind of a, uh, a monster appeal to it. Tell me uh, about how you would describe this bike. I'd describe it exactly like you did, old school, old school in a sense, um, but also new school. I know that's quite a quite a, um, a common phrase, but I think this has sort of done it in a big way, whereby you got this '70s sort of length front end and stance, but not used other bells and whistles normally uh, sort of seen on on, on, a, on a retro chop, and I think it's perfectly uh, sort of met the. Uh, the boundary between old school and new school, if you like. All right, so uh, let's start about this. this let's start with the frame. Uh, is this where you start out with? This is exactly what I started out with. This um, this frame, spectacular frame, was built by uh, Wayne Murray of Murray Customs. Um, I did intend to modify the frame, but once I'd seen it as a rolling chassis, I sort of found I couldn't get myself to 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 put a grinder to the frame. You know. Um, it was supposed to be a lot lower, but looking at it, I just saw it with the front end and the wheels on it, and I just thought uh, it's, it's got to be left like that. And it was it was a brilliant project to um, to take off from there. So, what's your frame geometry? <laughs> the, geom the, the the rake you're looking at about, about a 42, a 42 degree rake, um, about three 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 inches of ground clearance. Uh, so. It's, I do a lot of riding on it, but it's, it's by no means a commuter bike. Um, uh, 18 inch over front end, and with the drop with the drop seat. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the tanks actually incorporated in the frame. I do see that. And um, what kind of mileage do you get on it? I tend to go from gas station to gas station, if you like. But so um, you're making friends. I am. I am. But um, I get I, you know a lot of people say to me it's unrideable, um, doesn't look very functional. If it wasn't if, if it wasn't a rideable functional motorcycle, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any interest in it. You know, it gets ridden a lot, uh, probably a little bit too much over the last few months because picked picked up the odd uh, stone chip here and there. But hey, at least it's getting used. You know, I do. Uh, talk about the engine. What did you do with that? Uh, did you uh, do any updates to it? It's it's a great looking mill. Um, yeah, it's pretty much standard. Um, Besides the uh, the carburetor and the ignition carburetor, well, that's an SU carburetor, which is normally used on cars. A lot of British cars. Uh, yeah, I had one. I had a couple on my MG. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly the same thing. I had a little bit of a hard time getting it running correctly, thanks to. Um, I had the same problem with my MG. Uh, you get that a lot, yeah. <laughs> thanks to Southern Carburetors, which I doubt you have over here to help you out with the MG. Um, they rejetted it and tuned it, and it's running like a dream now. Um, besides that, another company, uh, Boyer Branson. Uh, they supplied me with an electronic ignition. I installed that, and um, you know, with with the um, Southern Carburetors assistant getting that carb carb uh, rectified and the electronic ignition from Boyer, it's been 100% since then. And what engine are we looking at? We're looking at a, a 1980 Yamaha XS650, um, which I'm, I'm pleased to say are quite popular in the U.S. at the moment. Oh, they they are smoking hot, and I must say this is the most interesting. Um, uh, XS 650 chopper I've ever seen. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at in the front end? Um, the front end, it's a, it's from, from, from your homeland. I couldn't tell you exactly what year it's off. It's an aftermarket part. I don't know the supplier. Um, I got along with the engine, and um, it's 18 over. I was, you know, I was a bit dubious about the the length and. You know the the rake of the bike, but it operates well. You know, really is a, a superb, uh, smooth ride in the front. Now I, I like your your front headlight choice. It's crime scene chopper headlight. That's correct. And you know, a lot of the custom bikes that win run a crime scene chopper headlight. Is that one of the reasons why you selected that? 
Um, no, I'd like to think uh, I sort of got it when it was in its due season, you know. But um, I think it's a bit of a, a last season thing, if you like. But yeah, you're quite right. They are very popular, good looking headlight. And um, yeah, sort of um, have seen them on a, on a few show winners. Now you're rocking it with white walls. Uh, is that your choice? Yeah, the Avon, uh, the Avon Gangster. As soon as I saw it said Gangster on the side of it, I had to have, had it. To have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but, but I love white walls. I mean, you, you, you can't not, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of the bike? It, it's called the Brothel Creeper. And why did you uh, pick the name Brothel Creeper? I didn't. Um, when I acquired the oil tank, it came with those words written on it. So, uh, Ala, that's the name of the bike. Exactly, yeah, and what a superb name it is, so, you know. And talk about the tail light. Uh, the tail light is from uh, Custom Chrome, um, straight out of the catalog. Great looking thing. I saw the brass, I'd already put loads of brass on it. So, I thought of, instead of having the crime scene choppers tail light headlight combination, which I'd seen far too many times. You've seen that before. I have, yeah. I'm sure you have as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I thought that, that was sort of sort of tied in with the bike. I think it's How difficult was it to make the, the shift linkage and the, and to go from, uh, you're shifting from a hand shift to, a, well actually to a, a control shift to a, to a hand shift? Uh, I normally, prior to this bike, the previous, my previous ride had a, a jockey shift whereby, as you know, the, the lever's mounted to, to the gear changer itself. So um, I sort of um, took steps towards the change, but once you've ridden around the block a few times, it's pretty much like driving a car, if you like. You know, um, you just, you, you, you're just changing gears, you clutch with your foot, selecting gears with your hands. Um, just got to remember not to put your left foot down, and you'll be all right, yeah. Now, I understand in Europe, that it's a lot more difficult to ride custom bikes in the street than in here than here in the states. So, uh, do you do you normally just speed away from the police, or uh, do you talk to them, give them rides? No, as as, as well as this uh, bike's running, I wouldn't get away from the police on it. Um, but they, for some reason, they're kind of forgiving with custom bikes. They don't like street fighters, don't like sports bikes. So I don't know why that is, but. Um, yeah, perhaps it's um, they don't see too many of them, you know. But they do like the brothel creeper. They said, well, they let me ride on the road up until now, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the 411 on the brothel creeper. And uh, we really appreciate you coming out and uh, showing us the bike. Good luck today and good luck at the show. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me here. It's been, uh, been fantastic.